Hello everyone. Let's spend some time talking about what literary critics tell us about how the Greek audience that the play was written for would have viewed Medea. Now, in modern culture, what Medea does would be unacceptable regardless of the reason. And we see Medea as, well, just nuts. But the Greeks would not have viewed her that way. And for this course in the exam, we're going to focus on their views, not modern views. Our sources for this presentation are Carol L. Hamilton and Laura L. Holland. According to literary critic Carol L. Hamilton, Medea's actions would have made perfect sense under the circumstances to the 5th century BC audience that would have viewed Euripides' play. It's important to understand that the audience would have viewed the significance in Medea's act as lying in the consequences to society, in this case, the city of Corinth. In the ancient Greek culture, the individual was viewed as belonging to the city in which he or she lived and as sharing in the responsibility for the well-being of the city as a whole, Hamilton states. The Corinthians would have seen Medea as wicked even if she hadn't killed her children. She had killed the king of Corinth and his daughter, and even in our modern culture, assassinating a leader is seen as even worse than killing your own children. Not only would Medea have been seen as wicked by the Corinthians, her children would have too, because as Hamilton states, Wickedness and guilt were believed to be contagious through either contact or inheritance. The children inherit wickedness and guilt through inheritance, and if either Medea or her children were to be allowed to remain in Corinth, the guilt would spread to everyone in the city through contact. Literary critics agree that the Corinthians in all likelihood would have killed the children if Medea had not. For one thing, they would have wanted revenge for Creon's death, according to literary critic Laura Holland. Remember that Achilles kills Hector to revenge Patroclus' death, and Holland states that revenge killing was very common in ancient Greece and seen as purely justified. Even if revenge had not been a motive, the Corinthians would have killed the children. According to Hamilton, Medea knows that the Corinthians would have viewed her children as wicked, guilty, and contagious. She knows the children very likely would have been killed because of the wickedness and guilt that they inherited and for their potential to spread that guilt throughout all the citizens through contact. Now, we might say, well, death is death. It would have been better to take a chance. But we have to remember that the ancient Greeks didn't have laws against cruel and unusual punishment, and we saw in the Iliad that the Greeks could be very vicious in killing. Also, the children might have been subjected to torture before being killed. Compared to what most likely awaited them, Medea undoubtedly sees the quick death that she could give them as more merciful. Oh, and by the way, there's an equivalent in a much more recent time and in this country. Runaway pregnant slaves who gave birth while on the run knew what would happen to both them and their child if they were captured. All slavery is appalling, but some slave owners in the United States were more brutal in their treatment of slaves than others, and captured slaves and their children would have been sold to the most vicious slave owners as punishment. Sometimes, when mothers knew they were about to be captured, they killed their children to save them from the horrendous lives they would have lived with these vicious slave workers. But the fact that the death Medea provides is more merciful is not the only motive Greek audiences would have understood. We saw in the Iliad that the ancient Greeks did not hesitate one minute to mutilate corpses, and that was as true off the battlefield as it was on, according to Holland. In addition, we learned from Priam's visit to Achilles that proper burial was extremely important in ancient Greece. Of course, it's still considered important, 
but the ancient Greeks believed that the spirit could not rest if the body was not buried properly, Holland says. And even beyond the burial, Medea would have had to worry about how the Corinthians would have acted. Holland states that the ancient Greeks had great respect for the dead, but the disturbance of a tomb was certainly not unheard of, particularly if the dead were seen as being involved in or contaminated by a political action, such as, oh, killing a king. In fact, Holland reports that the graves of heroes were often kept secret to protect them from political opponents. Holland says that that possibility might have been enough of a motivating factor for Medea to kill her children so that she could take their bodies to a district that was protected by Hera, the goddess of hearth and home. If an easier death and safe burial are not enough motive for Medea's acts, there is also the Greek view of atonement. Holland explains by taking the children's bodies to a safe burial ground and stating that she will establish a cult and celebration in their honor, Medea is taking responsibility for restoring an appropriate relationship between the living and the dead. In the Greek's eyes, her actions would not be seen as dehumanizing or criminal, Holland says. Medea publicly states that murder is unholy and requires atonement and atonement will begin with the funeral rites. That's not to say that Medea's anger at Jason and a desire for revenge against him don't play a role. We see that Medea is enraged at Jason every time the couple meets, and she has good reason to be. Greek plays were written in cycles, that is, a series of sequels. A modern comparison might be the Star Wars movies. We learn in an earlier play that Medea goes to great effort to help Jason obtain the golden fleece that he needed in order to become king of his own city-state. And also we see that she agrees to do so after Jason vows to marry her. She leaves her home to follow Jason, which is how she ends up in Corinth. Now, moving from one city or even one country to another is not considered a big deal in modern times. But as we discussed, in ancient Greece, the individual and the city were considered closely connected. Leaving your city forever was viewed more like the defection that occurred during the Cold War with the former Soviet Union. It was a great sacrifice. And how does Medea repay her for helping him get the Golden Fleece and leaving her home? By marrying another woman. And you have to remember that the Corinthians would have forever viewed Medea and her children as outsiders. Sure, Jason says he will support them, but he had said he would marry Medea, too. Why should she believe him? And even if he did support them, Medea and her children would continue to be considered outsiders. The ancient Greeks weren't exactly known for multiculturalism. But the ancient Greeks wouldn't have blamed Medea even for her anger. Hamilton tells us that the Greeks did not believe that emotions came from inside individuals. Instead, they believed that, they, that emotions came from fate and the gods. Now, Aristotle had said that the behavior resulting from emotions could be controlled with training and a great deal of effort. And this rationalist view is what the chorus expresses in Medea. But the emotions themselves are beyond Medea's control. Remember that Agamemnon tells Achilles that he has taken Briseis because he is blinded by anger? No, Achilles doesn't accept his excuses, but the Greek audience would have seen their validity just as they would understand that Medea has no control over how she feels about Jason. And as Hamilton points out, Medea does debate whether she should kill her children, and she even debates whether she should kill Jason's new wife. She shows some resistance to her emotional impulses. We also have to remember that the ancient Greeks had no concept of free will, Hamilton points out. In the closing lines of the play, even the rationalist chorus reflects that the gods will have their way. Obviously, the audience that this play was written for would have viewed it very differently than we do, 
And as I said, in this course, the focus is on how the original audiences would have viewed a work, not how it fits into a modern context. Okay, I think that gives us some information that helps us understand how the Greeks would have viewed the play. Thank you so much for studying this video. If you have any questions, email me from an account other than Canvas at deborah.oki at csn.edu. I really hope everything goes great for you, and we'll talk again soon.